Hello students, so welcome back to my channel and now we will move forward to module 2, Environment and Market. So make sure you downloaded module 2, Environment and Market in StockEd. So before we start our discussion, I want you to get a one whole sheet of paper. So you will be needing that for answering the pre-assessment questions. And once you are done watching this, upload your document in our grade. So are you ready? Okay, when you are an inspiring entrepreneur, you need to explore the economic, cultural, and social conditions prevailing in an area. The needs and wants of people in a certain area that are not met may be considered business opportunities. Kapag identify mo yung needs ng community, its resources, available raw materials, skills, and appropriate technology, can help a new entrepreneur seize business opportunities. To be successful in any kind of business venture, potential entrepreneurs should look closely at the environment and market. Ano ba kapag sinabing market? Market ang ginagamit na term para sa mga bibili or gagamit ng products or mag-a-avail ng services na i-offer nyo. Can be people, businesses, organizations, or institutions. An entrepreneur should always be watchful of existing opportunities and constraints and to take calculated risks. Kapag sinabing opportunities, so ito yung mga factors na makakapagbigay sa inyo ng posibilidad na makapag-umpisa or makapag-expand ng business at mas magkaroon ng kita. Kapag naman sinabing constraints, Ito naman yung mga factors na maglilimit na mag-grow yung business mo. So, pinapakaba niya yung chance mo na magkaroon ng kita. So, ang isa sa pinakamagandang paraan para ma-evaluate mo yung opportunities and constraints is to conduct SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. SWOT analysis is a managerial tool used to assess the environment. It is used to gather information, which is then used in strategic planning. Strengths and weaknesses are internal in an organization. So, ito yung mga resources na pagmamayari nyo. Meron kayong control. Kapag naman opportunities and threats, ito naman yung mga nasa external environment. Kapag opportunities, ito yung relation sa market, new technologies, and external factors such as government policies, climate, and trends. When you say threats, it replaces what the competitors are doing. It also includes legal and other constraints. Okay, now, in your one whole sheet of paper, answer pre-assessment task 1, multiple choice. You do not have to copy and answer. Just write the number and your answer. You can pause this video while answering and play again once you are done. I guess you are done. So please keep your answers and we will be needing that later. So let us proceed to product development. When we say product development, it is the process of making new products to be sold by a business or enterprise to its customers. So, pwede yung i-modify yung existing product, yung presentation, formulation of an entirely new product that satisfies a newly defined customer's needs, wants, and or marketplace. So, in this module, kapag sinabi kong development, ibig sabihin ay yung buong process ng pag-identify ng market opportunity, creating a product to appeal to the identified market, testing, modifying, and refining the product until it becomes ready for production. So, these are the basic questions that you can ask yourself about product development. Kapag nasagot nyo na ito ng maayos, maaari nyo sabihin na ready na kayong mag-develop ng product or mag-render ng service. Number one, for whom are the product or services aimed at? Number two, what benefit will the customers expect from product or service? And number three, how will the product or service differ from the existing uh, 
uh, brand from its competitor. In addition, needs and wants of the people within an area should also be taken into big consideration. Lahat tayo ay may kanya-kanyang needs and wants. Kaya lang ang bawat tao ay may iba't ibang konsepto ng needs at wants. So ngayon, naalamin natin ano bang pinagkaiba ng dalawang to. Importante na mas maintindihan natin kasi isa to sa mga mahalagang bagay na kailangan yung maintindihan. So magagamit nyo to sa face na kinikilala mo or naghahanap ka pa ng opportunity sa paligid mo para sa business na itatayo mo. First ay ang needs. Sa Tagalog ay mga pangangailangan. Kailangan. Okay? So, ito yung mga pangunahing pangangailangan. So, anong example nun? Food and water. Next is clothing and other personal belongings. Number three, shelter. Upang may masilungan, matutulugan kayo. Sanitation, yung mga kailangan para magkaroon kayo ng good hygiene. And health, like vitamins. And last is education and relaxation. So, basic needs are essential to every individual so he or she may be able to live with dignity and pride in the community of people. These needs can obviously help you generate business ideas. Why is that? Kung ang business mo ay nag offer ng products or services na need or kailangan ng tao or community, then we are sure na magkakaroon tayo ng customer. Meron tayong kita. Kasi kailangan or need ng tao yung ino-offer natin, like food and water. People will not live without this, right? So, meron at merong bibili niyan. Ang challenge lang ngayon sa mga entrepreneurs ay yung competition kasi maraming entrepreneurs ang nag offer ng same products and services na kailangan ng tao. Kaya important ang strategy and innovation to caught people's attention. I hope na clear na sa inyo kapag sinabing needs. So now, we will proceed sa wants. Kapag naman sinabing wants, sa Tagalog ay gusto. So, ito yung mga desire, luxury, and extravagance that signify wealth and an expensive way of living. Wants or desire are considered above all the basic necessities of life. Some of the examples are the eagerness or the passion of every individual which are non-basic needs. So, ano-ano yung mga yun? Fashion accessories, shoes, Clothes. So, clothes, nasa basic need siya. Paano siya nagiging want? So, meron kasing mga tao na bumibili sila ng mga damit. Sobrang daming damit. Na minsan, hindi na rin naman nila nasusuot yung mga binibili nila. So, nako-consider na lang siya din as wants. Okay? Uh, gadgets, appliances, traveling around the world, eating in an exclusive restaurant, watching movies, concerts, plays, having luxurious cars, wearing expensive jewelry, perfume living in impressive homes, at marami pang iba. Kumbaga, meron pang extra. So, halimbawa sa tao, nakabili na siya ng needs niya, sobra-sobra pa, and then may extra pa siya to purchase his or her wants. So, yung needs and wants ng tao, yan yung makakapagpahiwatig or makakapagbigay sa iyo ng idea kung anong klase ng business ang kukuhanin mo or gagawin mo. Diyan masusukat mo kung magiging successful ba yung business mo, ano pang pwede mong i-consider, kinds of people, ano yung mga needs nila, wants nila, yung lifestyle nila, culture and tradition na meron sila, and yung kanilang social orientation. So, ang product development ay nakadepende sa needs and wants ng customers. Next na i-discuss natin ay concepts of developing a product. Concept development, so ito ay considered as a critical phase in the development of a product. So sa stage na to, dito mo i-identify yung needs ng target market mo. Kung meron ng existing products na pinoproduce yung competitors mo, 
kailangan ay na-review mo na yon bago ka mag-release ng product specifications. So, please look at the figure, the stages of concept development. Number one, or the first um, phase, is to identify customer needs. Paano mo ma-identify yung needs ng customers mo? Pwede ka magbigay ng survey forms, conduct interviews, researches, focus group discussions, and observations. Sa pamagitan niyan, mas madali niyong ma-identify yung needs and wants ng inyong customers. Sa pagkakonduct niyan, makakapag-gather kayo ng product specifications such as performance, taste, size, color, shape, lifespan of the product, and the list goes on. So, this is a very important stage because it will determine the product to be produced or provided. Number two, establish target specification. Based from the process you conducted in stage one, you can now establish target specifications of the prospective new product and or services. A target specification is essentially a wish list. Number three, Analyze competitive products. Mahalaga na masuri mo yung mga existing products na pinoproduce ng competitors mo. Bakit? Para makapag-provide ka ng important information in establishing product or service specifications. Kasi pwede mong tularan or ma-improve yung existing design attributes na meron sila para sa product or service na i-offer mo. Number four, Generate product concepts. After the three stages, you may now develop a number of product concepts. So, yung products, uh, so yung product concepts na yun, pwede mong i-illustrate yung types of products or services na possible yung magawa and mamimit yung requirements na kailangan mo. Kailangan, bago ka mapunta sa stage na to, ay nagawa mo na yung tatlong na unang stages. Number five, Select a product concept. So, magkakaroon ng evaluation and pipiliin yung best or final concept. And after maselect yung final concept, magkakaroon ng additional market research and through that, pwedeng makakuha ng feedback from certain B customers. Nabanggit ko na sa first video kung paano naging mahalaga ang feedback. Remember? Number six, Refine product specifications. The final specifications are the result of extensive study, expected service life, projected selling price, among others, are being considered in this stage. Number seven, perform economic analysis. Always review and estimate the economic implications regarding development expenses, manufacturing costs, and selling price of the product or services to be offered or provided. This is a very important stage. And last, plan the remaining development project. This is the final stage, so you can prepare a detailed development plan. So, ano yung mga makikita dito? List of activities, necessary resources, and expenses, and yung development schedule with milestones for tracking progress. Finding value. People buy for a reason. May nakita sila sa product or service na binibigay mo and yun ang magandang dahilan kung bakit babalik-balikan nila ang product at service na pinaprovide mo. Bibila sila ulit or magpapaservice sila ulit sa'yo. So, yung customers ay may nakita sa'yo kaya ikaw at ikaw ang pipiliin ikaw yung best option nila. Kasi kung wala silang makikita na magugustuhan nila, then wala silang dahilan para bumili sa'yo or mag-avail ng service mo. This implies further that you offer something to your customers that will make them value your product or service. The value you incorporate in your product is called value proposition. When we say value proposition, it is a believable collections of the most persuasive reasons why people should notice you and take the action you're asking for. It is what gets people moving, 
what makes people spend for your product or service. For example, you are offering a cold, tasty, natural lemonade on the go. That will be your value proposition. Okay, I hope you get that. If you have questions, please comment down below or message in our group chat. Or post a question in discussion forums. Innovation. You are introducing something new in your product or service. This may be new idea, new method, or new device. Anong magagawa ng innovation? It can increase your sales and profit. So, if you want to increase your sales and profit, you have to innovate. Ano yung mga possible innovations na pwede mong gawin? You can change your product packaging, improve the taste of your product, color, size, and perhaps price. So, pwedeng example dito ay yung mga fast food chain. Yung mga paper bags nila, pinapalitan nila yung designs. Or yung example ko last video yung about sa sizes ng burger. Meron ding mga nagagawa ng burger na may color yung buns, di ba? So, innovation yun. Kapag naman sa services, ang pwedeng innovation na gawin nyo ay you may apply new and improved methods, additional featured services, and possibly freebies. For example, sa pagpapedicure, kapag nagpamanicure, pedicure ka na package, may hand and foot massage ka na uh, marireceive. So, that is an example of innovation. Next is the Unique Selling Proposition or USP. A seller presented that their product or service is different or better than of the competitors. Bago nyo ibenta yung inyong product or i-offer yung services na meron kayo sa target customers nyo, you have to sell yourself in. Mahalaga yan lalo na kung yung products at services na meron ka ay katulad sa competitors mo. USP requires careful analysis of other businesses, ads, and marketing messages. Kailangan mong ma-analyze mabuti kung anong binibenta nila, anong sinasabi nila sa products or sa services na ino-offer nila. So, hindi ka lang mag-focus sa product or service itself. Kailangan matutunan mo din kung paano nila ipinakikilala ang sarili nila kumpara sa kanilang competitors. So, here's how to discover your USP and how to use it to increase your sales and profit. So, the first one is use empathy. Isipin mo, ikaw yung customer. Ikaw yung market. Okay? Mag-focus ka sa needs ng target customers mo. Huwag mong isipin na ikaw ang gumawa ng product na yon or ikaw ang nakaisip ng service na ipoprovide mo. Siyempre, ikaw ang gumawa na, so you are into it. Pero dito, kailangan kalimutan mo yon kasi tandaan mo, ipoprovide mo yung products at services na yon sa target customers mo, hindi para sa'yo. So, the question you can ask to yourself is, what could make them come back and ignore competition? Possible questions may be focused on quality, availability, um, convenience, cleanliness, and reliability of the product or service. So, uh, maganda ba yung quality ng product mo or yung services na ino-offer mo? Available ba siya 24 hours or tuwing office hours lang? Tuwing weekdays lang ba? Convenience. So, kung paano ka nila, kung paano ka magpo-provide ng service or yung product na offer mo, malinis ba siya? So, yun yung mga questions na pwede nyong pag-isipan or kung, kung saan kayo pwede mag-focus, okay? Next is to identify customer's desires. Importante na naiintindihan mo and alam mo kung ano yung nagmo-motivate sa customers mo para bumili ng products at service mo. Make an effort to figure that out. Analyze and utilize the information that motivates the customers in their decision to purchase the product or service. And last is, discover customers' genuine reasons for buying the product. Information is very important in decision making. 
as what I've said before, an entrepreneur always improve themselves as well as their products and services. Why? To provide satisfaction and retention of customers. As your business grows, you should always consider the process of making your customers important information and questions that you can use to improve your product or service. Their feedback is very important and can increase your sales and profit in the future. So that's it for this video. Please take a photo of pre-assessment task 1 multiple choice and upload it in Google Drive. Further instructions and link is posted in StackEd. So, thank you so much and we will continue the discussion next week. See you in my next video.